So new information coming from studies on the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine have shown that it doesn't necessarily offer protection against this new coronavirus variant that first emerged here in South Africa. Early results show that mutations of the virus will still be able to spread among people who have been vaccinated. This announcement means that new vaccines will, need, will be needed in future as uh, COVID-19 continues to be some kind of a moving target, so to speak. So Professor Tula de Oliveira from the University of Guazu Natal's Research and Innovation Sequency Platform was the first we're told to identify this variant. As can see, the Prof joins us now via our video link to help us understand what this means. Prof, thanks for your time. Welcome to the AM Report. It's great to have you on. So a lot of questions emerging about this variant, but perhaps in layman's term, let's start by understanding what about this variant makes it difficult to treat through the vaccines we currently have at our disposal? A lot of talk about protein spikes. What does that actually mean? Okay, so, so yeah, let's try to explain that very simply. Yeah, so, so the virus in South Africa, and not only in South Africa, in many places in the world, now these variants have emerged in multiple countries, yeah, and they are circulating many other ones, it added mutation to the virus. What it means? It means that the virus now, he first he is able to bind a little bit better to the receptor in the human body to cause infection. And that's why we saw this very fast uh, second wave, both in the UK, but also in many countries in, in Africa. Yeah. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that it seems that these variants, yeah, they, they also have all the signs of being escaped from antibody response. And normally the vaccines, one of the components of the vaccines is the antibody response from the, from the body. Yeah. So what, what also means? It means that it's crucial importance to do these studies where the variants, um, they, they are circulating. For example, the, the Johnson Johnson results came last week and, and, and show uh, a, a good efficacy with 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 the trials in South Africa, and then this weekend, more specifically last night, presented by this this, this fantastic scientists of of Pitts, Shabi Amadi, and and then followed by Glenda Gray, the president of the MRC, it showed that the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine was very efficient uh, in in South Africa until October, but as the new variant uh, appeared, it seems that didn't have the same level of, of efficacy. But this is on patients that are mild or medium disease. What it means? It means that in this whole trial, not one single patient developed a serious disease or hospitalization. So what, what they show is that it's not a big difference on, on people that receive the placebo or the vaccine to develop mild uh, dis disease. Right. What is also important then is that this might have implications for our rollout plan, right? From what we know, would it make more sense then to ensure that the people who are more likely to develop severe illness are vaccinated first, given what we know about how this AstraZeneca vaccine responds to the variant in South Africa? Okay, so so what what we believe is that the government will, will keep the, the program that they have devised, that's quite comprehensive, yeah and they will start rolling out uh, uh, other vaccines starting from next week. For example, they will start a lot with, with the Johnson Johnson. And as you are aware, the, when President Ramaphosa came to the TV, he also mentioned that he has also ordered a 20 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine, which, which seemed to be a very strong vaccine. And the Johnson Johnson was proved to be quite efficacy here in South Africa. Unfortunately, this, this happened with many countries in the world. It, uh, many of your viewers will be aware that certain countries like Canada and the UK, they put orders of millions and millions of vaccines before they are even being tested. So they didn't have any assurance that they would they would work. And what we what the government did is to bring some vaccines from the AstraZeneca, which 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 I think that they are carefully analyzing how they're gonna roll that. But more important is that they we will start the rollout next week as planned, but with a vaccine that has been tested and show efficacy in South Africa. And it's unlikely to be the AstraZeneca vaccine first. Is is that a a likely outcome? So 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 today this morning I hear our, our health minister in the radio, yeah, and he say that they will start rolling the, the Johnson Johnson from from next week. Yeah. 
and and one one of the good things also about that vaccine is that can be co-produced in, in in plants in Port Elizabeth yeah with with by coincidence that where the the variant was first identified and, and emerged yeah right interesting what is also another reality prof of course is that this is just the first few of many possible other mutations of this virus that could come in the future. Can we imagine a situation where we do get another mutation that makes it difficult, for instance, for the Pfizer vaccine to continue being effective against even things like moderate to mild illness? Scientifically okay, speaking, so is that possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So scientifically speaking, we would be in a 10,000 times worse position if we didn't have this whole scientific uh, expertise of the country, be able to run vaccine trials, be able to, to, to do genomic surveillance at very fine scale and have labs that can test that. So imagine if we didn't have that and we are rolling a, a big vaccine blind, yeah? So I think that's a big advantage to South Africa to have this very serious and well-developed scientific uh, infrastructure to test that, yeah? One thing that uh, also the vaccine um, manufacturers, they, they, they also worried and they are doing what they call boosters for this variant. And it's not just because South Africa, it's because variants with similar mutations have emerged in, in, in Europe, in North America and South America. So that became become a crucial importance to the whole world. And the main take home message is that we have to take very serious this virus. We have to really try to control transmission yeah, and roll out uh, vaccines that show efficacy as soon as possible. So to don't give more chance the virus to keep adapting yeah. to better transmission or evasion of immune response. Interesting you say that, because my understanding, Prof, is that the vaccines at our disposal, all four of them, actually don't prevent transmission. There's been a lot of talk about them preventing illness, right? Either severe illness or moderate illness. Um, does it make sense to have a generation of vaccines that doesn't prevent transmission, when in fact the objective is to try to prevent this virus from mutating as we see it's actually doing at a rapid rate. So, so yeah, of course, this is a very fast moving field. So, so results from both of UK, but also uh, from Israel, that, that Israel is the country that have increased vaccination quicker than any other country in the world, have shown that the vaccines not only prevent disease, but they end up decreasing transmission. Ah. And that's even the main objective of the vaccine was not to, to decrease uh, to decrease transmission, but avoid disease. Yeah. So I think that was a boost for, for, for the world to expand vaccination. And, and this variant was basically a wake-up call not to let any country behind that. Otherwise, these new variants will keep emerging. And for example, the one that emerged in the UK now is found in 65 countries. So they can transmit very quick across the world. Mm. A point that the World Health Organization has been making for some time now. Um, uh, Prof, I wonder if you can shed light on a moment from yesterday's briefing that certainly created a charged exchange on, on places like social media. This conversation around the expiry of the vaccines at our disposal. Some people are now suggesting that, you know, the vaccines themselves don't go off. So it's not, you know, expiring in a sense that many people might understand, but it's more to do with the data that underpins the vaccine and whether or not it's still valid, for lack of a better term. Can you help us understand what is actually meant by vaccines expiring? Yeah, unfortunately, I will not be the, the best person to, yeah. to answer that. Yeah, I am a geneticist. Yeah, ah, okay. so I don't I, I don't know much about uh, vaccine manufacturing and expire date. But what uh, what I understand is that the, there is a ministerial advisory committee focused on vaccine, and that's one of the big questions that they're gonna they're gonna try to to advise our government. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. And uh, when we discover a new vaccine, uh, Prof, how quickly is that possible? I mean, we heard the first reports around the South African variant, so to speak, emerging in about late last year, and you know the impact is being felt this year. How quickly are we able to um, discover new variants as they emerge, so to speak? Okay, so so now it's very quick to, to, to identify new variants as emerge. One thing that South Africa did that became one of the leading uh, groups in the world, countries in the world, is this process of genomic surveillance 
that will go very fast from sample to whole genome to understand. So for example, we did participate in the, in, in, in the vaccine investigation of the AstraZeneca, and we think five working days of receiving the samples, we could have identified all the variants on the breakthrough infections, yeah. So now this technology, it is available in South Africa. It is also being uh, supported by the Africa CDC to roll out in, in Africa as a part of a continental program and in Europe and North America and Asia, basically they are genotyping a very high percentage of the virus. So these days it's quite quick to identify new variants and very important, this kind of fast research that communicated back to companies designing the, the vaccines, but also for governments that have to act on it. All right, Professor uh, Tulio de Oliveira, thanks very much for your time and your insights. Really appreciate it here on the AM report. Professor de Oliveira is with the KZN uh, University's Research Innovation and Sequencing Platform. And in fact, he's the director there. Prof, thanks very much indeed. So some of the take homes there is, yes, the AstraZeneca vaccine is perhaps not as effective as initially thought against mild and moderate illness. There's still a lot to be said though about whether or not it can prevent severe illness, hospitalization, and possibly eventually death.